month, he said, oh, his son was in a coma also. The second month that the son's in the coma, his wife had a heart attack and died in his arms in the garage at the hospital, and he couldn't save her. His son came out of the coma. Two months later, caught pneumonia, and he passed away. This gentleman carried his sons and his wife's ashes along with him. And just, I mean, he, everywhere he went, he, he carried their ashes. And he shared the story with Scott and I. Um, now, most of the homeless people we met were very genuine. We did meet a few people. We met this gentleman in Vegas that told us, we saw him on the third day having the same sign, collecting the same money, um, collecting money for bus fare, stuck, need to get home. He said he makes, uh, I made over 52000 last year just doing that. Uh, so there are those people there. Now, we, we, we went on the third day when the homeless people told us why we weren't getting picked up and why the cops were chasing us off the freeways, and they said we, had, we determined we had to walk 17 miles through the desert. So we got up at 6 o'clock in the morning. It was 80 degrees. I went to a jack-in-the-box. We filled eight water bottles. Um, we each got these huge, large glasses of ice topped off with water. I soaked a T-shirt, put it over his head, and we started walking. I kid you not, I was this close, nine miles into the trip, to the prison wall, and nobody would come out and arrest us and take us to the next stop. I kept telling him, why aren't you guys coming out here and getting us? I see the tire tracks. So we, we made it 17 miles through the desert. Um, we got picked up right away once we made it back to a road. Um, while we were going along, um, we were going, heading up 15 north, following the 15. Our plan was to go over to the 70, cut through Colorado, while wildfires were going along. So we had to go up north to the 80, and from the 80, we shot over to Des Moines, Iowa, and then we took all country roads back again. Um, we had, uh, when we were in Des Moines, Iowa, um, coming through, Um, we met up with this gentleman who uh, was um, works for Atlantic Truck Moving Company. Um, he tried to get Scott and I to help him move. Um, the next day, he was like, you know, I'll pay you $100 and uh, put you up in a hotel, etc. And we're like, no, you know, we appreciate the ride. But then he said, let me take you to dinner um, at least, you know, and explain to me what YouTube is. He had young children, and his son wanted to upload videos, and he wants his family to watch. So he took us to dinner. Said, order whatever you want. We are on day 11 or 12. Scott orders a steak that's this big. And he ate everything except for a little small portion. Um, we sat there and talked to the gentleman. We closed the place down. I mean, it only closed by about 8 or 9 o'clock. It was a small town. And he insisted. He, he paid for us a hotel room and then um, gave us $50 to continue along the trip. Um, so we slept in a hotel. That was our... Third night, I think, sleeping somewhere inside. Yes, our third night. Um, we slept in a hotel that night. We got up the next morning around 7 and started walking and hitchhiking through. Um, it was another day of nothing but women. Our very first ride was this lady from Hawaii had picked us up. Um, she took us about 10, 15 miles. That was part of our reason of whole doing the country roads is was a lot of short rides. Um, we got done with her, or got done. <laughs> we finished the ride and got dropped off, and we got picked up with another lady who was a painter. Um, she took us a little ways. And then we had um, made it, gosh, I can't remember where, how far we made it that day. I think we made it close to the Indiana-Illinois border. Nah, we made it to Illinois. Um, that, that, on day uh, 13, we made it to Illinois. We were 30 minutes from Peoria, Illinois. It was around 9 o'clock at night in this little town, I think it was called Brookshire. And uh, we were following the 24 to, to connect up back into the 42 where old Route 66 started, where we started our trip. And everybody warned us. Uh, we stopped at this little gas station. They said, you know, where, where are you at? Where are you going? We told them, like, do not go through Peoria, Illinois. Go around it. They're like, then literally, that's exactly what they said is two white boys will not make it walking through Peoria or at Illinois at dark. So, you know, I told Scott, I'm like, look, man, we've done fine. We're going to continue. We're not quitting. We're going. So we got to Peoria, Illinois, around 9, 30, 10 o'clock, and we get to this intersection, which was Martin Luther King Boulevard, and it said downtown or the 24. And I said, Scott, I think the Martin Luther King is the bad area. Let's go this way. So we went this way. 
and I am not exaggerating. If you all remember Norton Holmes in Barberton, where the old high school was, we at 9.30 we fought on our first Norton Holmes project, and it was project after project after project after project until 12 o'clock at night that we kept walking. There were gunfire, people shooting guns. Um, we were walking along the road, and it was about 11.30 at night. Um, there was a seven, and, I would say between seven and 10-year-old kid with a two-year-old kid in diapers on the road across the street throwing rocks at Scott and I. And not little rocks, they were throwing big rocks. And, you know, um, I politely I kept telling you, please stop throwing rocks. Please don't throw rocks at us. Um, they threw a few and then took off running. Uh, we had walked, and uh, out of nowhere, this guy appeared, and he was like, are you Popo? I'm like, no, we're just Po. Uh, <laughs> somebody asked him if he wanted something. We, don't, we just kept walking. We kept walking. When we were walking, he blew his shoe out. His literally, oh, was it your left shoe? His left shoe, complete, completely, sole of it came off. So he's walking, and I, tie, I take his lace, and I tie it. We're walking, we duct tape his shoe, we'd, make, we'd go about 20 minutes and it would come apart, we'd duct tape it again. Um, I, literally, I mean, it is the worst. I, and I talked to the reporters in Peoria, Illinois, after our trip, and they even agreed, it is the most drug infested, and just, it was crazy, it was insane. We met this one lady along the way, he and I got lost in Peoria. She looked just like a banker. Uh, she was dressed to the T. And I went up and I said, excuse me, I said, can you tell me, are we on the 24? We're trying to make sure, where's the 24? She said, 24 what? I said, the road 24, 24 what? No, I'm looking for the road, 24 what? 24 what? That's 24, 24 Main Street, 24. No, ma'am, uh, it's 24. 24 what? I'm like, Scott's trying not to laugh. We're wise. I said, Scott, come on. She just kept screaming at us. I mean, for a block away, she just kept yelling, 24 what? 24 what? So we make it out of Peoria, Illinois, and it was about 1 o'clock in the morning. He and I slept from 1 until 3, and out of paranoia, I had the worst dreams and the craziest dreams along the trip. I had a dream that some guy chased me, turned into a, a unicorn, and started eating my <laughs> iPad, and double-A batteries started falling out of the sky. It was crazy. Um, woke him up. We walked a little ways. Slept again, we found this little gazebo, and we slept in a gazebo till around 7 o'clock. Um, went to a McDonald's, and then we hitchhiked from 7 o'clock until around 11.30 before we got our next ride. I can say this, many times along the way, I wanted to throw my backpack. I would, we'd walk for hours, and nobody would pick us up. And from 7 until 11.30, his shoes blown out, I'm almost out of duct tape. Nobody's picking us up. I mean, we lost our magic. Just our thumbs weren't working anymore. And I went into this uh, church in uh, Washington, 